All right, awesome. So more discussion on artificial intelligence in in APIs and the importance of AI in uh, API security uh, will be discussed by Deb Roy, who's our next speaker. Um, so I'm really excited to welcome Deb to the stage. Um, I'm a big believer in the fact that we're simply just generating too much traffic and too much data today uh, for anything static rules-based to be effective. So I think really the only real effective approach is ML. And so Deb, I'm sure you're going to be covering that. Uh, we're really excited to have you here today uh, and covering such an important topic. And it seems to be a common theme this morning uh, in, in API security. So would love to have you uh, demystify that for everyone here. So Deb, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Welcome to the stage. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Elisa. Great sessions going on. I saw, uh, I was listening to what Jyoti was telling. The work he's doing is the great uh, work. And this is something I believe like we need to look at holistically. This API security. This is a, something is so important. Oh, for Deb, our sorry. Uh, Deb, let me inter uh, interrupt you real fast. Uh, can you go full screen on your uh, presentation? Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. This is what happens when you're live. <laughs> is it good now? Um, I you're probably sharing the wrong monitor, but it looks like we uh, are still just seeing the these slides. Uh, API security and AI. Yeah, we can see that, but it's not full screen. Like, it's not oh. the it's not the screen the screen share view. Okay, maybe I can stop sharing and then share again. Oh, the joys of being live. Yeah. <laughs> Is it good now? Let's see. There we go. You got it. All right, Deb, take it away. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is such an important topic. I was listening to Jyoti, like the work he's uh, doing at Traceable. Like this is a big problem uh, now. Um, nowadays we are seeing like companies are uh, moving to the cloud. There is a rapid change in application landscape. So this is becoming a central theme and uh, organization need to look at in a different perspective to secure this API. So that's why, uh, that's what I'm going to cover today. I'm, uh, from Accenture, I'm working in this API space for last 10 years and uh, last couple of years, I'm um, interested and focusing on this API security and AI space. I have a couple of patents here in this area. We recently, one patent got granted in the API security application API in the API security. So I'm going to talk about um, few things today. One is like, why? Hey, Deb, uh, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you again. <laughs> this is going to end up becoming the Alyssa Night Show. Um, we, can you click that hide um, button on the bar? We see that, that okay. bar at the bottom. Yeah, if you just click hide. Do you see it? There's a little gray bar at the bottom for StreamYard. Yeah. yeah that says stop sharing. Yeah. Yep. If you hide that and then just go back to sharing yeah got it and then go back into there we go all right i will disappear into the ether now thank you thank you no problem so yeah i'm going to cover mainly three topics today one is why api security important and the second thing we'll touch upon like this foundational api security is not sufficient the foundational api security what we are talking about is the api gateways the traditional api gateways the security model what they are providing why that is not sufficient and the final piece like how we can um, augment this api security foundational api security with the power of pi so these are the three things i'm going to talk about today okay so these cyber threats are evolving. Cyber threats, we, we are every day we are hearing like there are new kind of attacks, people are getting impacted, not only people's organization, government, everyone is getting impacted. So this is a very uh, kind of a um, important topic for everyone nowadays, like what kind of new cyber threats are evolving, right? What, what, what we need to prepare for. So this is a kind of, it's, we are not seeing any uh, signups slowing it down. And this kind of cyber attack is, 
evolved or increased during the pandemic. We have seen a lot of new kind of attacks coming up and this has this is just increasing. And um, why uh, and and the uh, type of uh, these cyber attacks, like what we used to see in the earlier days, is also kind of um, in, uh, changing. The it's more of a becoming an intelligent cyber attack, right? We can uh, seeing like ransomware, cyber terrorism, deep fake, smart device attacks. So a lot of new kind of cyber attacks are evolving. But in the earlier days, the technologies what uh, we used to put in to prevent this kind of thing is need to rapidly change, right? Because this um kind of attacks what we are seeing today is powered by more sophisticated tool sets now the hackers have more sophisticated tool set they have power of ai they have power of even while putting this uh, cyber attack in place they are using automation ai so a lot of intelligent technologies they are using so we need to be prepared from our end as well to make sure we have right tool set in place to uh, protect our organization or the digital assets so few things uh I, I want to share like a couple of months back, one of our client, uh, uh, they uh, reached out to us, like they are doing a big uh, API security program, uh, API uh, implementation program. And they uh, go, uh, like a couple of important API, external facing API. And then suddenly they realize that uh, they have, there is some data breach, right? And they reached out to us to, they did their internal assessment uh, investigation around that, of why that happened. and. They reached out to us for external viewpoint as well uh, to understand like what's going wrong. So during the first discussion, what I was having um, that client partner, like they are talking about, we did everything by the book. We we implemented a sophisticated API gateway technology. We implemented a um, uh, implemented the APIs using all the patterns. We have all these patterns reviewed and approved by our architecture board, and we have. Um, sophisticated operation monitoring and team in place but still uh, I, I we are um, uh, we are facing this issue can you tell us like what went wrong that was the question so uh, then we went uh, ahead and did some internal in, um, joint in investigation with the client team and then do, we found really interesting things there which i'm going to share throughout this uh, as i move towards next slide couple of slides i'll keep sharing that story so that was the back end. Like you see, like uh, if even if people are implementing sophisticated API gateway technologies and following all the rules and regulations or best practices, but still they are not secure. So we can see this all the time in the news, like Facebook, Pelton, Penmo, Experian API. So they all are facing the similar kind of challenges nowadays. So now if you think uh, about why this is happening, right? So one of the aspects here, like if you uh, look back in monolithic system era, right? Monolithic system to distributed system, that time we or semi-monolithic system, we had a very um, small, um, very, I, I, very big attack, uh, attack surface, right? Big attack surface means it's the one box. If you think about it, it's the big, very one box, which is controlling all of your system asset and hack, if, it's, it's kind of a hacker needs to go through that, crack that box. But once we are moving towards more distributed architecture, cloud API, now we are talking about microservices. It's splitting that attack service is getting increased significantly. Now, instead of one big box, it's kind of a smaller boxes. And if a hacker, they have multiple options, like they can look through all of your boxes. And if they get access to one box, maybe that can open uh, other boxes as well. So that's how this API attack surface is increasing. Right, so the hackers are getting more um, thing to uh, research on or explore. Right, so that is one of the area of why we are seeing these API attacks are increasing. And another interesting thing I'm going to share here, like uh, uh, we always think about um, um, what we see in the front. Right, we always think about okay, let's put together in an API and. Uh, we protect the API using um, our traditional um, security models, which can be a traffic management or can be um, a rate limiting policies or implementing some API um, protection policies, threat detection policies. But one um, one of the things we, we forget, like we have a lot of backend APIs, right? And we have a lot of backend APIs. We are basically modernizing our applications legacy application using this API, right? We have a lot of backend APIs which are still um, exposed 
through this experience API. So for a API to, uh, for a uh, experience API, it's not possible to cover all the loopholes what we have in the backend APIs, right? Or the protect all the backend APIs. So one of the story here I'm going to share, I was, this is very interesting story for me as well. Like this is two fine gentlemen you see here, Patrick Blackheld and um, Abraham Wald. So they are the genius of their time. They are uh, during the World War uh, II. So they are, uh, one of them is Nobel laureate, another um, Abraham, Dr. Abraham Wald was a famous mathematician who was a decision theory, um, uh, contributed heavily on the decision theory. So they were tasked by uh, UK Royal Air Force to uh, figure out like why um, they are having heavy losses in in uh, losses to their bombard planes in while sending them to the Germany, right? So there was a heavy loss. Like if they are sending like hundred planes to attack Germany, only uh, forty to fifty planes planes are returning back. Right? This team was initially one team was put together to analyze why uh, this is happening and what we can do uh, to protect this. Uh, um, bomber planes or make it more secure, right? So initial team, what was put together, they looked at this bomber planes and they assessed like the areas which is more uh, kind of attacked, right? The return planes, they basically assess the plane which got returned from the field and they assess the areas which has got more uh, attacks or more uh, um, damages. Their initial recommendation was let's put together more armors in those areas which got major hits, right? Then, then the Dr. Patrick uh, and Dr. Abraham, they came into the, um, join the team. And then they assessed, then they, they uh, came up with a really interesting thing is about a survivorship bias. So their point of view was like, you need to look at the plane which didn't return. So plane which returned from the field and they got attacked into these specific areas. Maybe these areas are really strong. That's how they are able to return. But the plane which didn't return, maybe they got hit in the other areas which you don't see in the return plane. Right, so that's the viewpoint uh, they shared, and they uh, told the group, okay, you have to put armors in the other areas which is not hit, but which you don't see hit in the return plane, and that significantly uh, improved the survivorship of this plane from uh, fifty percent to eighty percent. So that was one thing I can I relate with APIs also. Normally, when you look at an API, we uh, talk about okay, let's put more security, more rate control, more rate limiting, but there are other hidden areas, right, which we uh, don't see and which needs more protection. That's gonna. That is not kind of uh, not able. We're not able to protect those using the traditional technologies. So where we need to bring in more AI or sophisticated machine learning algorithm. Now talking about another uh, concept here, which is uh, why we think like API security is the new application security. Like here, as you can see, like in all the applications is depending on the APIs nowadays. Like everything is applications are calling the experience API. Experience API is based on process API. Then process API is basically calling um, the system API. Now, once we when we protect uh, when we normally do the security testing of our application, we always focus on the application part of it, right? We test the application security. We see how uh, the user is navigating through the platform. If, if there is the right kind of authentication, authorization rules are there. But if you el eliminate this application from the picture, you are exposed. All this API is exposed, but we'll not, we'll not be able to uh, test all these APIs, different uh, permutation combination, only by focusing on the application security testing. Because uh, wh what happens like uh, wh when you think about this um, um, API um, combination of API, right? Um, system API, process API, experience API. So these think about in in such a way like this systems API or maybe your legacy system API, right? They may be a XML based uh, web services, and you are building process API in as part of your modernization initiative. Then on top of you are implementing an experience API, which maybe you are converting this legacy API into a, um, a um, REST web services, right? And then that REST web service you are publishing to your application. And this application, when you provide a documentation to your application team, API documentation to application team, you provide them a specification of your REST API. You tell them, okay, this is the input, this REST API, um, except this is the output it will provide, this kind of security mechanism we implemented. 
But all these backend details, like what is the system API, what are the process API, you normally doesn't share, we don't share with the application team. Now, if some suppose there is a scenario where your um, hacker is ex, um, find out this backend API about this backend API, and they start sending some other um, kind of messages, maybe XML messages through your API, or maybe some other different kind of uh, uh, headers they are sending, which can expose some of your backend functionalities which you have not tested yet, right? Uh, through your application uh, security testing. So that's what same thing happened with this client I was talking about. So they have did the modernization. Uh, they did um, implemented all these uh, modern APIs, but all those APIs were on top of their backend API. And then, then backend APIs were not secure enough, right? And through the monitoring of the uh, application API and the testing of the application API, they are not able to cover all this whole aspect of the spectrum of this API ecosystem. So that is very important aspect here. Now let's move towards the next slide. Here we are going to talk about just the if, why API security is important, right? So we talked about artificial intelligence. We are um, this artificial intelligence. Not only organization has the artificial intelligence capabilities, your uh, hackers also has artificial intelligence. They can also play with the build some bot, intelligent bot, which can play around your API and find loopholes. Then second thing is cloud adoption. So rapid cloud adoption. So companies are putting uh, their all their digital assets into the cloud. And how you expose those digital assets is through API, right? So that's increasing the our API attack surface. Then a lot of regulation change we are talking about on insurance, banking, and that's also increasing a number of open APIs we have exposed to the outside world. And then definitely uh, Internet of Things is also another aspect here. So all this is playing role in increasing API and increasing API attack surface. And that's why we I feel like this API security should be, should be a very important topic for the organization right now. Uh, now let's talk about how we can apply AI in API security. So a lot of things uh, Jyoti covered in uh, earlier, like he was talking about uh, behavioral analytics, um, API monitoring. Um, so this is a framework uh, we put together. Like if we think about API security, uh, traditional API security, how we can augment that with the power of AI. So let's talk about the first one, which is the access control. So in, in traditional access control mechanism, wh what we used to do is checking the token or checking the um, origination of the traffic or maybe putting some traffic control uh, or rate limiting policies. Now, if those are kind of a rule-based, you can uh, rule-based protection, but if your hacker is coming from a different region or different location, they can easily exploit your rule-based protection and they can get access, bypass those things and get access to your uh, backend system. So for that area, we can employ really sophisticated machine learning algorithm, which can not only uh, work on this rule-based system, they can uh, learn from the data, right? Once you start capturing the, the data, it can learn from the data, like from where this traffic is originating, what kind of user agent is trying to access this data, right? And based on that, they can be, give you a deep insights uh, on the access control, and uh, it easily can detect the, any kind of violation or uh, you are seeing in the access control part. That's the high level. Now let's look at the second layer, which is anomaly detection. So one you, once you protected your uh, API through access control, then how API is being used by the application, right? So think about a my account application, right? It's it's all um, APIs. We, we, we um, is a kind of behavioral. All API uses such a behavioral pattern. For example, in the my account application. Uh, if I if a user has to log in, what what are the steps they need to do? They need to first call a login API. Once they are into inside the application, then they will be they can call maybe a get balance or check balance API. And then if they want to make a payment, they can call a make make payment API, right? So there is a flow. Every if we put a like intelligent API, uh, intelligent machine learning agent on this API data, it can easily figure out that what is the behavioral pattern of your application or the API. Right, how the users are navigating through your API landscape. 
and that's how you'll be able to detect any anomalies uh, in future like suppose if someone user agency is directly trying to access a payment api without going through your login api or um, check balance api that's the anomaly then that kind of anomaly if you uh, put a supervised agent there which you can teach it uh, from the your historical usage pattern it can easily detect that kind of anomaly now that's the second level and third level if we talk about is a logic abuse detection that you de define the um, path of your api and you analyze that api but what the, what kind of data is getting from those api right that's the business we call it like a business logic ab abuse like suppose a legacy api is exposing certain fields and then your experience api is streaming down the field and they are passing only certain data element right not passing all the legacy data element and if you suddenly start seeing um, your API is passing some of the new data element which you have not seen in the past, right? That means something is going uh, wrong in your with your API, right? So this is one example. There may be many examples in this space, like how you can uh, create model around this logic abuse, right? Uh, how you can learn like what kind of data your API is passing and how um, uh, how to identify those uh, abuses. So that's the third layer, and the fourth layer is kind of a once you um, collect all the data, right, then you can build an API monitoring, right? It's not only about the experience API monitoring, it's the end-to-end -end API monitoring. Even you can expand it to the, your application. You build a like end-to-end -end correlation of um, monitoring. What events are going through your systems, right? What are the account number coming from experience API? What account number you are seeing in your um, uh, system API and the process API and the backend? So all these things can be tried together and you can really build a very powerful correlated monitoring using the Power API. And then the next part is the visibility. Uh, you know, all API calls is coming from a context. API calls should be attached to a context. So you in a production environment, there should not be any out of context API call, right? Suppose a user is trying to pay a bill, that's as a separate context. And that user agent and that user um, platform um, will be trying to access certain API to achieve that context. So that contextual deep visibility also you can build using the power of AI. And then the next part is like protection. Like once you deploy API in the production system, and uh, you um, you are you did all your testing, you did all your uh, analysis, and you deployed the API. Is it done? No, because uh, this environment is changing frequently environment is changing so that's why it's very important for you to monitor keep monitoring the api behavior in the production and once you monitor right with this 1.1234 1. 1, and 5 you are monitoring your api now you have to protect right a lot of times we have seen like uh, um it's if people um, basically identify any kind of api based um, maybe after one month, two months, or even six months, it gets unnoticed because everything looks good on the front end, right? There is no, no um, using traditional model when, when we do monitoring, we don't see any failures, we don't see anything uh, suspicious. So this kind of API breach gets undetected for months of time, right? And then um, it's, 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 that's why it's very important for you, uh, for organization to put together a API protection board which can basically augment the human monitoring, which can monitor, monitor all these insights generated by your other API or machine learning model. And based on those monitoring, it can take actions to protect your API. So for example, like if you see a suspicious behavior and large amount of data getting exposed through API, you can have an action associated to your, with your board, like shut down the API or maybe uh, block that access token, or maybe uh, block that IP, or that kind of lot of actions you can model around this bot. And you can map your behavior with action with, with this help of this bot, right? So that's the protection part of it. And the final part, which is a which is a, like a far-fetched idea, like how, if, if it, is it possible to like remediate API? Like once we, um, um, the, once we have all this monitoring data, we identified the uh, threats and can we real time basis, can we do some monitoring? It can be a, like a simple, uh, sim uh, simple remediation, um, which can be like a increasing a rate limit or more maybe a undeploying a API or maybe you rebuild the API using some additional um, 
security model right so all these things you can model in advance like okay this these are the um remediation i can be i can do in my api and this kind of modeling may need some advanced level ai algorithm like the reinforcement learning algorithm think about a self driving car like what self driving car is doing it's sensing the environment it's getting all the inputs and based on that is taking an action uh, right whether put a brake on or you know, go right or left right so the similar way we can build a reinforcement learning agent which can learn on top of all these data point and then take actions and you can build your or model your actions according to your landscape you can start with small action and then go to the more advanced level actions so that's the api remediation so this is the seven points uh, uh, we see that ai can be applied into the api security space and uh, we started working on this uh, idea of like api um, protection um, um, few years back i started on this thing like initially we started like how we can apply ai into a api um, management platform like how we can work on this data rich data set of api and get real insight not from the only the runtime perspective also the design time perspective and also the execution uh, time perspective and so the historical data right so that's where we started building a, a platform here which is got recently got patented i think last year uh, we call it like api uh, security uh, assessment platform and um, this is basically what it does it provides a it reads all the data sets from the all your apis like it's not only the runtime data it also works on the configuration data api definition data runtime data everything and we built sophisticated ai algorithm there which can classify or process all these data and generate really rich uh, risk profiler right it can identify what are the risky api or what are the apis which you need to remediate or you may need to take actions so that's the whole uh, central theme of this platform what we put together uh, which is we call apiq intelligent api monitoring and also another aspect to this like we are talking about the remediation part like auto healing which we are which can be achieved uh, we started with a small like uh, remediation activities but it can be expanded to a uh, bigger uh, remediation of api and definitely the api bot which can work on the, um, the protecting your api based on this all rich data what you will gather from this machine learning model hey deb i'm sorry uh, unfortunately i have to cut you off again uh this was uh, an awesome topic and i think ml uh is going to continue to be part of the narrative and api security uh for a long time to come as we move away from more legacy systems so for those of you who have questions we had about five or six questions come in please definitely reach out to deb directly um feel free to reach out to deb on social media or email and uh uh, Deb, we appreciate you presenting today, and we hope to have you back at a future show. Sure, sure. It was nice uh, speaking here. And if you have any question related to API uh, security, please, uh, or on this topic, please feel free to reach out to me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Deb.